Do you prefer a laser or a workhorse? Personally, I usually lean towards a laser, but there's definitely a place for both styles of knife in the kitchen. And today we're going to be taking a look at this Tokushu 210 SLD Gyoto. If you haven't already, please consider supporting the channel by hitting that like and subscribe button. Also, we have an IG knife shop that we sell some knives to help support the channel. And we also have a merch store where we sell some merch for you to further support this madness. Now, quick disclaimer, Tony from Tokushu Knife did send me this knife completely free of charge. However, they're not paying me for this video and I'm not affiliated with Tokushu Knife. So that way you guys know that my feedback and review is 100% honest and of my own. And as always, this is a first impression video. We'll come back here in six months to see how this baby holds up. First, let's take a look at the specs of this knife. This knife is advertised as a 210 millimeters Gyoto, but when I measured it from heel to tip, it's actually about 214 millimeters long. And you know I'm not going to complain about a little extra length. Now the blade height right at the heel is about 47 and a half millimeters tall and the blade thickness or the spine thickness right at the heel is 3.5 millimeters and it slightly tapers down to 0 0.6 millimeters right at the tip. And the blade thickness right behind the edge is about 0.2 millimeters. Next, let's go ahead and take a look at the material that this knife is made out of. This knife is made with an SLD core cladded in stainless steel and it is heat treated to about 62 Rockwell hardness. If you guys are not familiar with SLD steel, SLD is a semi stainless steel by Hitachi and it is great for the kitchen knife application due to its wear resistance and anti corrosion properties. So basically what this means is that you have the corrosion resistance of a stainless steel and you have the performance that is similar to a carbon steel. Now it can still patina, but it is less reactive in comparison to your full carbon steel. From what Tony from Tokushu Knife told me that this steel is actually very easy to maintain. But if you do plan on setting it down for 30 minutes or an extended period of time, so 30 plus minutes, definitely wipe it down and keep it dry or else you will develop some patina and spotting on the knife. So with all this said, this might be a great choice for those of you guys who are working professionally on the line or for those of you guys who just like something that requires a little less maintenance. Now enough about the steel, let's go ahead and move on to the handle. The handle, before I go into it, let me preface this by saying I am not sure if I'm pronouncing these wood names properly. So. If I'm butchering these names, please correct me in the comments below and let me know how this is actually supposed to be pronounced. It is made out of a Selkova wood handle and this collar is made out of a Paduk wood. Next, let's go ahead and move on to the fit and finish. Let's check for blade straightness. Blade is nice and straight. Yeah, blade is nice and straight. Let's take a look at the finish. The finish is very nice and even. And I gotta tell ya, I love the Tsushime pattern that they have on here. I remember first seeing these SLDs with this crosshatch hammer pattern, and man, I just fell in love with it because it's such a unique and beautiful look. I just really, really like this crosshatch pattern on here. Next, let's go ahead and move on to the spine and choil. Now, before we get started on that, I do want to mention that this knife came with the new Tokushu choil rounding service. So that way you guys can see how it looks, and what I think about it and whether or not you guys want to include it in your future purchases with them. Now, first, let's take a look at the spine. The spine is not overly sharp. This is actually just a factory spine and it's very nice and polished. Now, let's take a look at the choil. The choil is nicely rounded, is comfortable in the hands. And I got to tell you, I'll get a different shot of this so you guys can actually see the finish as well. That this choil work that they've done is really nicely, like really nicely done. And how you judge whether or not it's nicely done is that you can't tell it's been worked on. That how they blended the finish to its factory finish and everything else. And it doesn't look like it's been touched from factory. Next, let's go ahead and move on to the fit and finish of these handles. Now, I am actually really, really impressed with the fit and finish of these handles. They're fitted in there nice and straight, nice and centered. There are no gaps in there. There's not a lot of like runoff glue lines or anything like that. And man, I gotta tell you, the craftsmanship on these wood handles are so well fitted. It's very comfortable in the hands, first off. And man, even for some of the nicer knives that you get, 
and some of the custom handle makers, sometimes you can feel still like a slight ridge between the collar wood and the handle wood. But this is so well done that there's nothing catching on my fingernails at all. Like usually even for some higher end custom handles, you can feel just like a very slight ridge between the two material, but this is so well done. So yeah, I'm very impressed with these handles. Let's go ahead and take a look at the profile and grind. As you can see here, the profile of this knife is a very traditional Gyoto profile. So it leans more towards the flatter side, has a slight belly. So it still allows you to do some rock cuts, but like most Japanese knives, it has a my brain shut off there for a second. It has a it has a flatter profile. <laughs> it has a flatter profile, so it's really good for slicing and and, and push cuts. <laughs> Jeez Louise, man. It's still early here. Anyway, as for the grind, let's go ahead and get a different angle so you guys can see this close up for yourself. The grind of this knife, as I've mentioned, is a workhorse grind. And a workhorse grind is a nice compromise. We need something a little bit more robust in comparison to a laser, but you also don't want to be cutting with an ax, right? So this is a nice middle ground for those of you guys who want something just a little bit more robust and a little bit more durable than a laser. Now, with all this being said, I'm really excited to try this workhorse grind out. So let's go ahead and move on to the cut test. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started on this cut test. The first thing we're gonna do, of course, is the standing paper cut test, which I kind of like. The reason I like this is because it's a good push cut test and just a little slightly harder of a push cut test in comparison to like the one that you're just holding in your hands. As you can see, nothing is holding on to this paper. Let's see how this goes. And push cut went really well. As you guys can see, the edge of this knife is finished very, very nicely. So a curved cut test is another one that I really like. See how much bite this knife has? And you can see it bites right into it. This edge on this knife is very, very nice. Traditional magazine paper test, so you guys can see, even for a workhorse, this thing is sharp, like sharp as hell. Next, my favorite, the carrot cut test. As you guys know, for carrots, if your knife if your knife's geometry is not properly done or, or is not done well, workhorses don't always necessarily mean it's going to wedge through your food. If your blade geometry and your, your edge geometry is nicely done, it's not going to wedge through your food. And as of right now, I've felt no wedging from this. It's performing really, really nice. Very, very nice feel on this knife. It's got nice heft to it. So you feel a little bit more, I guess, confident in your cut. As you guys all know, I never claim to be an expert, right? I'm very much a beginner in this. I'm not a professional cook. So sometimes it is nice to have something that's more like a workhorse versus a laser because a laser sometimes they're so thin that you as a user that's not very experienced as myself you know I'm, I'm talking about me that sometimes you get a little wary about using 
a laser knife to make sure that you're cutting properly and you don't damage the edge, right? But with something more like this workhorse right here, I mean, you can very confidently cut. And as you can see, no wedging whatsoever, very clean cuts. And you get the confidence of a heftier knife, a little bit more robust, that you're not thinking every single cut that you're making is going to be the last cut for your knife, right? Like, of course, it's, it's not the knife's fault. You know, a lot of times it's not the knife's fault. A lot of times it's actually user error. And I'm, of course, it happens to everybody. And especially with more delicate knives, like a laser, that happens, you know. But it just requires that extra bit of attention. And sometimes, man, after a long day of work, I just don't have that extra attention span, to be honest with you. So sometimes, like I said, it is nice to have something like a workhorse like this one to uh, take that little bit of extra stress away from, from my mind. Now let's go ahead, as you guys can see, the carrot test. Let's go ahead and cut through the rest of this carrot. As you guys can see, there's no wedging whatsoever. Very nice cuts. I'm checking the edge of these cuts to check for any blow throughs or anything that I'm, I didn't feel as I'm going down and there's nothing. Very clean cut through. Next, let's go ahead and move on to another very common, a very common ingredient that we all use in the house. A lot of us, not all, use in the house. An onion. Let's go ahead and see how this does. And even cutting through an onion, didn't wedge it at all. So, which is really nice. Let's try the horizontal cuts. Horizontal cuts are blowing through with no issue whatsoever, as you can see here. Man, gotta say, this is a very, very nice feeling knife. The food is not sticking to the blade really badly, as you can see. It's a very, very nice feeling knife. This extra heft just feels really good. Like honestly, it feels very nice. As you can see, there's no issue cutting the onion whatsoever. Yeah. Man. That's nice. That's really nice. So this wraps up the cut test. And as you guys can see, I am thoroughly blown away by the performance of this knife. The feedback of this knife feels so nice. And if you guys have used enough knives, you'll know that certain knives give you better feedback. And this feels just so nice. And maybe it's because of the extra material that you feel a little bit more. And for a workhorse grind, I got to tell you, I am very, very pleasantly surprised at how well this thing moves through the food without no, with no wedging whatsoever. Like the blade geometry and the edge geometry is so well done that I, I, it feels like you're just cutting with a heftier laser, you know, like a more robust laser. And yeah, I am very, very blown away by this knife. So I said in a disclaimer, I don't get any kickback or or have any affiliations with Tokushu Knife, but Tony over at Tokushu decided to give us a coupon code, which is RAF10. And if you use the coupon code, you get 10% off of your entire purchase. So that's just something nice that he done for us. So if you guys are interested, you can use RAF10 if you feel like it to get 10% off of all your purchases over at Tokushu Knives. Now this wraps up our video for this Tokushu SLD210 Gyoto. If you guys do like this video, please hit that like and subscribe button. It'll mean the world to me. It'll help me support all of this madness. And I will see you guys next week. Bye.